Welcome back to another day of charting. My name is Justin, and today we're going to be talking about how the bulls are on a parade, at least as of the close. So the question for today is going to be whether or not this is enough. Why? Well, we got Netflix earnings out, and they are atrocious. The stock is down massively. The stock right now is down by... I think it's down by 20 something percent here in after hours and that is giving a very sour tone to the broader market please note i'm recording this as of uh 13 minutes after the market closed so where we're going to go from here i'm not entirely sure but this printed close that we got here on spy did get us back above the 50 weekly moving average on a closing basis today but as we can note here in the post trading we are down quite a bit s p is now back below 443 and uh it's not pretty so what were those Netflix earnings and what does it do for us? We are down by 22.5% here at After Hours and uh, looks pretty terrible, not going to lie. Uh, CNBC was very fast to update this article. They updated it one minute ago. They were very fast when the stock started going down to revise the, the headline here to tell us that Netflix shares crater 20% after company reports it lost subscribers for the first time in more than 10 years. What does this feel reminiscent of? Uh, feels very reminiscent of Netflix, uh, sorry, uh, Facebook earnings uh, last time they reported. Why? Because it was the first time that we saw a contraction in Facebook as well, which to me signals that maybe some of the growthier parts of the market are climaxing, potentially uh, not gonna be able to go higher anymore. So we can also look over here at QQQ or the Qs to get a little bit of a glimpse here. And uh, yeah, we're down by 1% uh, here in after hours. Net-net uh, on the day. Uh, let's look and see where we are. Eh, we're still doing okay, right? So we're only up today by about 1% now. We can also check the NASDAQ futures just to see what's going on here. And we can note that, yeah, we're still up by 1% on the day. So, oh my God, only 1%. Yep, only 1%. And uh, looking over here at ES, again, just to see where we're smoothing out here, it's the first big company to report. Uh, ES or the E-mini futures are still up by an incredible 1%. So yes, uh, Netflix stunk. Uh, we were kind of expecting this to be the number as well. They actually beat on all their key metrics. So EPS here uh, coming in with a very nice beat, earnings at 353 over 289. Uh, revenue coming in with a slight miss. And then, uh, right, uh, they, they lost subscribers. I think they lost like 200,000 net subscribers. So that is a large thing the stock moves on. And it's, it says it right here, right? Investors hyper-focus on the new on new paying uh, customers uh, that led Netflix shares to uh, plummet 20% after the company's last earnings report in January. In addition to weaker than forecasted fourth quarter subscriber gains, company executives quietly admitted that competition from the other streaming platforms was having a negative impact on its growth. What does that mean? This is constructive for individuals who like paying for streaming services. It is bad for people who own Netflix, notably Mr. Bill Ackman. Um, I don't really want to focus on Netflix today, but let's go through and have one more look here. Why? Well, Mr. Bill Ackman, he went in big time, big, big, big long right here on the last earnings report that stunk. There's the Bill, Bill Ackman uh, pump, right? So little Nike swoosh. Low, low, higher low, lower high, boom, boom, boom. So from two earnings reports again now, we are down by roughly uh, half. From the gap down to the last report, we're currently down by about 32. This is getting quite tumultuous and it is also quite painful. There were some big buys in terms of, uh, uh, let me just see if I can find the screenshot here because this is from our platform. Let's open it up. It's not in the new way that it looks yet, but you can note here that there was some pretty big buying at uh, right 6, 17, 22, uh, 5, 6, 22, and uh, sorry, 6, 17, 22. This is for June. These are puts here at 680, 685, and 800. So what does that mean? Uh, people were uh, wanting some insurance going into this report, and uh, if it's going to start selling, people want to sell before anyone else has a chance. That's what happened here. So the concern for me as we're going into this earnings season with, again, uh, Netflix today, Tesla tomorrow, and then all the big tech following up next week is that the tone is now set. The first of the FANG, MG, including Tesla, have reported, and it's not a pretty one. We already know that Facebook stinks, and uh, they're going to be reporting on the 27th. So the focus is really going to be onto Tesla for tomorrow and whether or not they're going to be delivering anything good. So um, again, we don't want to call the stock down and out when it's only been about uh, right 18 minutes since the close. 
And uh, here we are, right? It's down pretty dramatically. So um, what I do want to focus on is going to be what this could mean for other names. So um, what I want to do is look at some of these weekly charts and just ask ourselves, what is the worst case scenario for an earnings report? And if that happens, do the charts break? Um, I also think that Tesla is potentially, again, key, I'm not a, not a shareholder. Uh, I don't have any financial motivation to say it's uh, one way or the other. I mentioned it yesterday, and uh, Tesla appears to be becoming a leader. I say that because as we look back here again, look at this green party, right? There ain't no party like a bull party, but someone spiked the punch bowl, and uh, we're down in after hours. So um, looking at the one day, there's breadth, there's depth, everything's up, energy's down, crypto's up, ARC is leading. This is the perfect recipe for me. Um, I wanted to get bullish today, and I did. Um, looking, looking at the last one week, which one is down the least? Ah, it's Amazon and Tesla. Those are the two that are down the least. If we look back here to year to date, ah, very interesting. Tesla's actually down the least. Even with all of the uh, the talking, right, the Twitter, um, Elon selling his shares, yada, yada, yada. Where are we? It's the one that is down the least year to date. The most bloody is here at Facebook at negative 37. I don't even know where Netflix is on here, to be honest. Uh, where is it? Um, I don't even know. Oh, it's right there. My bad. Oh, it's down 43 year to date. Yes. Yes, the sweet blood. So what I would just note is that uh, what's been green year to date, uh, notably energy, is what flipped today. So now let's pretend like we're running a normal show and uh, we're going to forget about Netflix and focus on Tesla coming up. But before we do that, we just want to have a look here and see whether or not there is any positive constructive price action on the chart. Why? Well, again, when I started recording, we were here at 442. Now we're back at 443. The after hours options trading is now closed as of uh, 115. And uh, we're up more than 1.6% uh, on the day. This is a beautiful, beautiful candle. And we got tons of room to backtest. The most important level for me is going to be where we close out on Friday, whether we're going to be above or below this most important number here at 444.26. When we recorded the video yesterday, we were talking about how the options were implying 443 for break even. Well, we got above that. We squeezed even higher. And uh, if we were closing at 443, I would say that's bullish, right? We're just below that 50 weekly. We're well above the 50 daily. And this looks really nice. So... Uh, let's have a quick look here at the earnings whisper report for uh, Tesla. We have the wider report too, but I don't think we have to really look at that one here. So again, 241 divided by 227 means that we're looking for roughly a 6% beat here on Tesla. But remember that Netflix uh, actually beat on earnings and slightly missed on revenue, but it's largely due to the subscriber growth. So in terms of Tesla, um, again, reporting on 420, Elon Musk will be happy, right? Reporting on 420 uh, at 410. I will wait until after this is out to record the next video. And uh, I apologize if the video is getting up uh, or a little bit uh, slow lately. Honestly, it's just taking like hours to process these videos on YouTube. So I'm switching to a 720p recording to hopefully fix some of that issue out. So the key dates now, uh, I think the Fed is more important than Netflix here. And uh, when we heard uh, James Buller today say that um, 75 basis points was initially in my base case, uh, because there's no way we can get to 300 without that. There's only so many meetings per year. He walked that back today and said that actually, it's not in my base case anymore. That's part of the reason why the market ticked up so high. Um, we also had a pretty broad based risk on sentiment for ARK. And uh, I think the rest of the world was also waiting to see what was gonna happen. I say that because the European market, the DAX in Germany, was in a doji uh, down by roughly uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 at the open for the cash market in the US. And then it pushed up to close down by uh, seven bips, right? Seven basis points, so $10 on a $14,000 stock, which, mean, which means the US dragged it up. So I personally think that um, with Europe saying that we're going to be, uh, right? It's not really time to be talking about tapering. Uh, China said that um, we're likely going to be easing more. There's some trouble in their economy. And uh, I think that is going to be hurting uh, U.S. stocks because the dollar is going to go up because, well, if it's not time to talk about tapering in Europe, uh, time to buy uh, the DXY, also time to buy TNX. And uh, we note that here, right? Another update. So TNX is up, um, DXY is up. And I think the reason why is because if we're going to be seeing easing out of China, it means that the dollar is going to be going higher. And then if we're gonna be seeing uh, slowflation or um, no talk of tapering in Europe, 
the 10 year note has to pretty much keep going higher. So what we're doing right now is climbing the wall of worry. And there's always something to be worried about. I'm sure there'll be some comments today telling me that, oh, you're so silly for being bare, blah, 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 blah. Um, but look here, right? Fear and greed um, going into the close is now back into neutral. So we throttled back down at the fear. We're back into neutral. Where will we be tomorrow? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I'm personally seeing the bull start to flex. So if it's going to be enough, let's now answer that question here. Um, it will be enough if we are holding the 50 weekly moving average on a closing basis. Why? I did not think this was going to happen, but if we look here, this is a bullish engulfing candle. If I uh, look really close, right? I mentioned this, uh, I said, I don't think this is going to happen, but usually what will happen in a trap is that we print a lower low, so the bears are like, oh, stupid lower low and lower high. These bulls are silly. We're going to go lower. Uh, nope. Um, we actually gap down, push down, pumped up, and engulfed the entire previous bar. Whether we cold or close at this current area at 445, I don't know. But the low is lower, the high is higher, which means we engulf the whole trading range from last week. In what? In two days. And uh, tomorrow is 420, so hopefully we can get a nice little green day. And it will be enough if we're able to close above uh, the 50 weekly by Friday. That's going to be four, three more sessions, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If the bears are going to take control, uh, this Netflix down move is nice, but it's giving up less than half of today's gain. So as of right now, this pattern is holding, it is intact, and it is the most important chart for moi. Why? Big tech earnings are in focus, and with a bullish pattern, with it reapproaching the 50 DMA, and with an inside bar tomorrow, what does that mean? Well, once the inside bar is formed, the next bar break, bullish or bearish, will be the decisive one. So we're probably going to open with an inside bar on QQQ tomorrow, and uh, I don't know exactly where we're going to go. We fall below 334.15, right? Uh, bears uh, notching a little bit of a win. If we manage to get above the 50, what does that mean? Well, it means... Uh, the 50 daily is holding, and then we got to get a push up here to the 50 weekly, which is at 360, right? That's a lot higher, um, which means that S&P is likely going to um, hold the 50 and advance closer to that 454 area right here. So again, that comes from our head and shoulders neckline at 454. So if uh, QQQ can make some progress over its 50 daily, get inside the gap, and then make, a, make some progress towards the 50 weekly moving average, that tells me that we're likely going to get the test up here at 454. Um, what we do on here is anybody's guess. Um, if QQQ cannot clear this 50 weekly here at uh, 363, again, the number over here corresponds with the color of the line, um, we're probably going to back test. How far? I don't know. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So here we go, right? It's nice and green. As of the close, we'll see where we are tomorrow. Um, nothing's really changed for me, in my opinion. Uh, Tesla is way more important than Netflix. I just think that if people wanted to have a sour reaction to earnings, they got it. They're like, oh my God, all the earnings are going to suck. Remember last report, it was only Facebook and the high growthy names. So we already know Face Stink is reported to miss on earnings again, which means that it's peak Facebook. It's not peak internet. Um, that's what I think. So the question regarding uh, Netflix is, is this peak Netflix or is it peak streaming? I am personally diversifying beyond Netflix. I've signed up for Crave, which is HBO and Show, uh, Showtime. I've signed up for Paramount and I have Netflix. Why? I want all of them. I'm diversifying. I haven't canceled Netflix, but there's not really a compelling reason to stay on either. Um, so there's, that's where we are. It's tough for content and uh, a lot of companies are pulling content off, uh, net, net, off of Netflix right now. Um, it's already been a longer video, so I have to start wrapping up now. I don't have my timer, so I don't even know what time I've started recording. Uh, looking forward to here. So 454 pivot still is. Bulls are currently, uh, right, uh, winning this one a little bit. There's currently no edge. I don't know, right? There's no wedge. we got to see where the weekly candle closes. And then earnings start to confirm it today with confirmation coming by the 28th when we have Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Apple all reporting. Remembering that uh, Apple here is expected to be, again, expected, not confirmed, to be doing a $90 billion buyback. So that would definitely add some wind into the sails for the bulls as we are winding down at the end of the month and winding down at the end of earnings season. Why bull or bear? Well, uh, dip into earnings. Easier to rally. Does not mean we will rally. So again, Netflix setting the tone, coming out first. I don't know, right? It's not really great. 
Um, it's one company. It's not the end-all be-all. I was already a little bit skeptical of uh, Netflix, so here we are. Got a big negative overhang. If people want to sell, they'll get their chance to tomorrow. 454 four, Impenetrable Fortress for the Bears. Yep, so far it is. DXY TNX breakouts, check. Recession risk. That one, uh, not so much. Tech leading the decline. Thank you, Netflix. Appreciate you. And then uh, surprises. I think Powell's actually, uh, actually, I don't know what he's going to say. Um, Bullard came out yesterday, um, talked, and they came out today and talked more. We went up both times. So if he's now the bulldog for Powell, maybe we're going to get some positive price action on Thursday after we hear from Tesla. Earnings are starting and then Russia, right? Nothing really happening there. No progress. So there we are. All right, now let's look at some of these charts because, uh, right, where, uh, oh, Netflix is not at 348. Let's just have a look and see here. I'm curious. What is Netflix now? 266. Ah, that's a little uh, little painful, isn't it? Yeah, that's a little bit painful. I don't know why it's not telling us. Oh, man. Oof, right? Yuck. Someone uh, bought all the way up here at 346. They're not thrilled. All right, maybe it's a dark pull print. I don't know. Currently down by about, oh yeah, negative 24%. That's nice, right? Yes, beautiful chart. Lost a quarter of its value. Bill Ackman, you know how to pick him, buddy. You're the best. You're the best. All right, um, let's do this here. Let's go to uh, uh, year to date. We already know who our leaders are, right? We're looking for Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft. You notice how we never talk about Netflix anymore? It's because they don't really matter as much. I think NVIDIA is more important than Facebook and the Netflix. So um, looking at the charts here, we can note that the trillion dollar companies are actually treading water because they're not down by 10%, which means they're not bright red. Negative uh, seven for Apple is still a big cut, um, but it's not, uh, it's not deep red like we would see here for Nvidia or for software or even for PayPal, right down 46 right now. So if you look at these charts, um, as of right now, um, let's, I'm going to do one more thing. Normally I wouldn't do this, but I just want to see if there's a negative uh, reaction here to some of these other stocks. So uh, just give me one second here as I check something and bring that over. Let's go like this. And there we go. So what I just want to note here is whether or not we're actually, we're actually seeing a negative reaction. Oh my God, it's down by a dollar, up by two, down by one. Who cares? Microsoft, uh, down by a dollar. Okay, cool. Look at the look at the bid ask here though, right? Sitting on the bid. So it could easily push back up to 284. Looking at face stink. Yeah, face stink's the one I would expect to be down the most. Why? Well, it's stinky. Amazon, okay, down by one. Uh, sitting on the bid, uh, sitting on the ask here. So right, $1 uh, bid ask, it's pretty tight. Down by 1%, up by 3.5, not that bad. Giving back a third of its gains. Nvidia, down by one, right? Up by two, down by one, okay. And then Tesla. Ah, Tesla's actually flexing here. It's the strongest one, down by 0.7. So if Tesla's down the least, is it still a leader? Let's look at the chart here. Uh, Tesla. So if it's down by 0.7, it means it's probably right near the high of the month here. Nothing's really changed. Got a cup, got a handle. And uh, we, do we have a higher low? 9.73. Uh, we do. So we got a 31 cent higher low and a higher high engulfing candle. Looks bullish, right? Once up. That's a leader. Apple uh, holding here, right? Even in after hours, it's above that area. So even when it gets pushed down, it's at 1665, which for me is still a breakout because we're, we're above 166. Bullish. We got dwindling volume here, which means that uh, it's going to have a big move on earnings. I'm just not sure which way. I happen to think up. Uh, Microsoft uh, ho hovering on the green line here, lower low, lower high. Making good progress today, but definitely not uh, advancing as aggressively as the others. Amazon, Amazon looks good here, right? Higher low, higher high, uh, back above 3130s. This is constructive, why? Well, we took out the relative low from here and uh, we're holding right now at roughly 3130, right on this area here. So that's that's curious. The low right here is 3126, we're holding. All right, uh, moving forward to, uh, let's look at Nvidia. It's holding the breakout here, right? Boop. Off the green line, looks good. Needs to get back above 235 to confirm it. And uh, lots of elevated volume here. So lots of uh, shares trading hands here. Why? Well, again, 100 million times 200 is a lot. That's a big number, 20 billion, right? Woof. Um, looking over here at, uh, what do we got? Face stink. Uh, it's stinky, right? P pushing off the green line, so that looks okay. And then, uh, did I miss any of these? Let me just double check, see if I missed any of these. Um, Apple, Microsoft, oh, Google. 
sorry, Google. Uh, Google, uh, lower low and uh, lower high, but right at the downtrend here where we would expect to find resistance, 2,600. I forgot about Google completely. Oopsies, sorry, Google. Maybe if you pro process my videos faster, I would like you more. Uh, no, 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 no trades, but it's down here at uh, 2586. So it's down a little bit, not a big deal. Just noticing that it's down and uh, still uh, in a consolidation pattern. This is a bear or a descend descending triangle. So a little bit more bearish, uh, but not confirmed yet. And let's look at the ETFs to wrap it up here. We got QQQ. So we got QQQ uh, pushing off our IHS here, right? Head, shoulder, shoulder, pushing right off the green line. Looks good. Um, almost a bearish, sorry, bullish engulfing as well. We got to take out 34769. We got to 34686. Pretty close within a dollar. Um, right at the pink line, which is the pivot. We got to get back above this 350 low to start making progress to the upside. I think this is very constructive to start the week off. It's only been two days. Spy looks good. Uh, pushing off the downtrend back test here, back above the 50 weekly, back above the anchored VWAP. We do have a uh, big decision in terms of volume coming in as well. And uh, the first sign for me today was that we broke our channel lower, which I mentioned. So we stopped going down and where are we settling here in after hours? Four, four, three. So regardless of what happened with Netflix, if we would have back tested 441, it would have said, it depends how we back test it. If we hold, it's bullish. If we don't, TBD. So I think this is fine, right? We broke out, went sideways. We can back test 441, 440. And in my opinion, still be okay. Uh, there we go. And uh, I think that's going to be it. So there's nothing else to really go through. If you want to see um, why I was bullish for this week, I encourage you to watch the video, which will queue up here in a moment. If not, again, as a reminder, we do have uh, Tesla reporting tomorrow. And if you're holding it at Tesla earnings overnight, we got jobless claims and Powell the next day. With that said, I wish you all the best of luck. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching.